Hey guys, how you doing? Steph here. So why is coding hard to learn? The answer is probably going to surprise you. Before I give you the answer though, I'm going to give you a few learning tips to make it easy to learn how to code. All right. So uh, tip number one, do 20 minutes a day. That's the discipline. The discipline is you're going to do 20 minutes a day, no matter what. You do that 20 minutes a day. Now, some of you are probably thinking, is that all you have to do 20 minutes a day? Well, no, but what the 20 minute a day hack does is that it gets you to the table so you can start writing code. That's the key. You got to be consistent. So think about it this way. If you know you have to sit down to do two hours, eh, there's going to be a lot of resistance to do that two hours of work, right? But if it's only 20 minutes, it's pretty easy. Not so much resistance. I may have tipped my hand there, so you may have figured out what the number one reason is why people fail at learning how to code, why it's so hard. Anyway, so you want to do that 20 minute a day rule. That's a super important thing. That's going to get the ball rolling. We'll keep it going. What's important is you want to have daily exposure to code. Well, almost daily. You want to do it four or five days a week, just like training if you're doing weights or martial arts or jujitsu, whatever. You got to give yourself some time off. So that it gives, it gives your brain chances, a chance to uh, assimilate the information that you're picking up. So 20 minutes a day, four to five days a week, take some breaks. You see, the more often you expose yourself to the code, the more likely, well, not more likely, your brain, when it sees something daily, it starts saying to itself, hey, that's pretty important stuff. I better put some brain power into learning this stuff. So a little bit every day goes a long way for you to learn how to code. Number two, you gotta write code. It's very important that you don't become a theoretical master, the mistake I made early on in my, uh, when I was learning how to code. You wanna start writing code on a daily basis, say five to 10 lines of code. So you sit down, you do your 20 minutes, and you see you're at the 10 minute mark, you don't wanna sit there and passively watch videos or just read about it. Oh, well, that's okay to, to a certain extent, but it's so important that you actually write the code. So Sit down, write that five, 10 lines of code, whether it be JavaScript or uh, Python or whatever language you decide you want to learn at first. Writing the code has a huge impact in terms of how quickly you're going to learn the stuff. And believe it or not, by writing code, even code that you don't understand, this is going to lead you to more quickly understanding it. By writing code, you will come to understand it. Even code you don't understand at the time of writing. So write code daily. So tip number three, which is actually the number one reason why people find learning to code so hard, uh, it's emotions. Lack of emotional discipline and control. Unfortunately, due to the way education works for most of us, we are taught to fear failure. We are taught to fear trying because, you know, if you fail a test, for example, whether it be high school, elementary school, college, you fail a particular test, very damaging for your overall grades. If your grades are overall damaged, you could have an impact for the rest of your life. This to me, and I've been in education for 10 years now, supplying curriculum and, and software to schools for over a decade. This is stupid. This is asinine. The most successful people in life try something, fail, get up. Try again, fail, get up, try again, fail, get up, try again, ah, succeed. Unfortunately, the way the school system works, we are literally trained, programmed like dogs to be afraid of trying something new. So what happens, that results in imposter syndrome. You're writing code, you don't quite understand it, you're confused, then you see people online, they're writing code super quickly, but you don't see is that they practiced it many, many times before they showed you, or maybe they've been doing it for many years, and so it leads to imposter syndrome. We also live today in the TikTok Instagram environment where we want instant gratification, instant gratification. You know, if I don't get it right away, ah, our brains are literally conditioned to find it difficult to have to spend time to learn something. That, by the way, is your first, first tactic, emotional tactic here, lizard brain tactic, is that when you come across something that's hard, that's difficult, that means it's valuable. So that should spur you even more so to want to approach that which is hard. Coding is a challenge for most people at first because of the nature of what coding is. You're probably going to be working 
in an aspect of your brain that you haven't used too often. You know we have a left right brain, right? And uh, if you don't practice coding, you don't do that kind of work, your brain's just not used to it. If it's not used to it, it's like, eh, there's resistance to learning it. So unless you're one of those individuals who's sort of inclined to that kind of stuff, you're going to have some resistance. So you're going to hit that wall. People get frustrated. We live in the TikTok environment. We got TikTok brain. Eh. So you got to push through that. You got to push through that. I'm going to give you some tips on how to push through that. So the number one thing to do is to recognize that anything that's hard has value. So you come across something that's hard, that means it's valuable, that should help incentivize you to keep pushing towards your goal. If something is easy, it has no value or very little value, right? That's why when you see people who do those uh, hustle videos and how you're going to take a skill set that takes one week to learn that somehow this is going to make you a lot of money, it makes no sense. Hustle is good, but you got to hustle with value. Hustle with valuable skills that are harder to acquire, right? So if you were looking at... Uh, these uh, programs where they, you're gonna, you, where they say, why are you going to sell AI-based video editing or, or HTML emails or, or, or marketing, three-step marketing uh, uh, consulting or something, something that's really easy to pick up. If it's easy to pick up, if it requires very little effort to understand or to develop a skill set in something, it's not valuable. And, and as such, everybody in his neighbor and his cat is going to get involved in that because it's easy. So it loses its value very quick, if, if ever it had any value. You have to recognize that coding development is an error-prone process. Even the best developers in the world constantly make mistakes. That's just the way it goes. Again, going back to the school thing where uh, we're taught to fear failure, it's, uh, it's antithetical to, uh, to actual coding. That's why we have Windows 11. In iOS, I don't know what's up now, 14 and 0 .01, uh, 0 .1, 0 .2, 0 .1.3. All those updates, bug fixes. What are bugs? Errors. Errors made by some of the highest paid developers in the world. So don't worry that you're going to be making errors in code. It's normal. In fact, I advise people to use errors and to create errors on purpose to help you to become a better coder. So don't be afraid of making mistakes. Don't be afraid of making errors. If you're making errors constantly, especially in the beginning, that's okay. It's new. You're going to have imposter syndrome, at least some of us will. And uh, just ignore that using some of the techniques that you're learning in this video. You want to associate positive things to coding. So when you start hitting roadblocks, it starts getting frustrating. Uh, do some deep breathing. Calm your lizard brain down. You know, um, and... In your head, you got to start positioning coding in a positive light. So what do I mean by that? you got to remember, you got to remind your brain, you got to remind yourself that when you learn to code, your value as an individual, your value in the marketplace is just going to increase. What you want to do is you want to create good emotions with coding so that when you go to code and you're continuing to learn to code, you want your emotional brain, your lizard brain, to fire off positive emotions. So you want to start creating more and more positive emotions with coding by picturing coding with things that you like and keep associating. Also remember the goal. What is coding going to bring you? The, the career, the financial independence, all this kind of stuff. You've got to remind yourself of the reasons you're interested in coding and why it's positive to become a pro developer. So you hit those hot spots, those hard spots rather. Remember those positive associations. Remind yourself why coding is value. Remember that anything hard is, has value. If it's easy, it's not valuable. If it's hard, it has value. So use those tricks and over time, your brain will start shifting and you start enjoy writing code. You start enjoy solving problems. It's like a puzzle. Final comment, you hear out there some AI based coding, coding naysayers. So people will come out in the comments and say, ah, that's it for coding. AI is going to replace you guys. Now, I can guarantee you, people saying that don't know how to code, number one. Number two, I suspect a lot of people who say that are just people who have hit the coding wall, meaning they've tried to learn how to code. They're too frustrated because they're, they tried the $10 course and they don't understand why they can't learn anything. They give up. 
And so they're looking for uh, an excuse to give up. So they say, ah, coding's finished anyway, who cares? You know, so they, they, they poo-poo it because it's hard for them. So I can tell you, as I said in several videos, AI is not going to replace coders anytime soon. And in fact, I have seen technologies prior to AI in years past, which were, up to this point, far more impactful than coding is, vis -a -vis co uh, vis that AI is, rather, vis-a-vis -vis coding. Let me say that again. I have seen a few technologies come out in the past that were far more disruptive to coding as it was then than AI has been so far. Like, it's not even close. I'll give you an example. WordPress. Like, WordPress, yeah. Prior to WordPress and other content management systems, people were building sites uh, with raw HTML, uh, some C CSS. They were just building it from scratch. It was always from scratch, building up these information sites, these magazine sites. Then content management systems came out, and all of a sudden, uh, building these type of sites uh, with raw HTML and CSS, that became a thing of the past because it would be crazy to do that with raw code when you could do it with WordPress. Did that kill development? No, not at all. Not, it actually exploded a whole new area of development, the content management uh, expert, the WordPress expert, the Drupal expert, etc. That's just one example. Another example I'll give you. Um, when we started creating web apps in the early 90s, it was uh, Perl CGI, CCGI, uh, Java servlets. It was a style of web app development that was dominant. Then something came out called Active Server Pages, which is a page-based paradigm of development. It's what we use these days for the most part. And that replaced this old way of doing things because it was hyper-productive. It was literally 10 times more productive. In one-tenth the time with this new way of building things, uh, building web apps, you could build something in one-tenth of time. It was that much more productive. AI does not give you 10x productivity gain. Not even close. Anyway, I can go on about the AI and coding. Don't worry, it's not going to uh, destroy coding. It's just something you, you embrace in development. That's all. It's not going to give you, as I said, it's not going to give you a 10x boost, meaning eliminating all the junior jobs. It's going to give you a decent boost. So there you go. If it isn't clear, the number one reason why coding is so hard to learn is because people have uh, to learn to control their emotions as they go through the process, because it's an error-prone process. It's not super obvious. We have TikTok brains these days, so we don't have the patience as we used to to sit down, do the 20 minute a day rule, as I suggested, and the other things I talked about in this video, and yeah, you'll be fine. You'll learn how to code. It's very rare that I meet somebody who's not intellectually capable of learning this stuff. The big problem, 99% of the time, is all lizard brain. It's all emotional. I'm Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. I train people and mentor people in coding, getting jobs, how to write code from to begin with, uh, how to become a freelancer, how to start a SaaS business. Everything I teach, by the way, comes from personal experience. I'm not a theoretical guy who's done read a couple of books and then giving it back to you. I actually have a long, verifiable track record. You can check me up on Studio Web. Just look up my name, Uncle Steph. And uh, yeah, there you go. Don't give up. Don't give up. Just keep doing that 20 minutes a day. You'll get there.